So our final presenter is Shahayas Bey, and he is the founder and director of Hacker Nest. Thank you. That's my only slide. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shaharis, the uh, founder of Hacker Nest, a global nonprofit movement that builds local tech communities around the world. Um, our mission is poverty alleviation through technology. First off, thank you very much for having me. Honor to be here. Second, I'm sorry you have me. This is the first time I've pitched in yours, and I have a crippling fear of public speaking. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> so global poverty is this big systemic issue that's huge and overwhelming because there is no single simple solution to it. It's so much easier to let the small, bearable issues of everyday life preoccupy us, so the big issues get pushed aside. Well. These are hegemonic challenges, and they've got millions of angles. Um, we decided just to choose one angle, and that's technology. Every civilization in history since time immemorial has witnessed technological adoption result in dramatically increased wealth and welfare. If you want to make a billion people richer, get them into technology. Seriously, a laptop and dial-up internet can get you a billion dollar business pretty easily because tech is hands down the most profitable bang for buck industry you could possibly be in. Acroness focuses on community because it is the cornerstone of economic development that drives business activity. Need to hire? Need a job. Do you need mentors, clients, business partners, etc.? Do you need to know which coding language you should get into? Well, you can find the answers to all of that and all of the people that you need access to in the tech community. Hackerness makes this accessible to everybody because when you grow community, it means that businesses get to hire better. They hire better, they make more money, they create more jobs. If so facto, food gets put on the table, poverty alleviation, poof. In terms of credibility, Hackernest understands how to build supportive tech communities in person better than anyone else on the planet because this is what we do. We build them from scratch repeatedly. Uh, our very first event was a dozen nerds hanging out in my co-working space. Today, we are Canada's largest tech communities and events. Toronto alone has over 6,000 people, three to five to, well, three to four to 500 people um, in that community come out to our monthly super unpretentious tech socials every month. Because I didn't already say monthly, I had to say monthly again because I'm terrible at public speaking. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, so in 20 months, Hackernest has, um, Hackernet Splinter Cells have pop up, popped up in 20 different cities in 12 countries on four continents. And we did this entirely organically because it's entirely demand driven. And we did this without funding because we're broke. And I'm terrible at fundraising. Um, so the thing is, the way that we do things just kind of fundamentally works regardless of race, region, religion, culture, even language. Um, and the funny thing is, you, you probably haven't heard of us because we're this broke nonprofit, hilariously broke nonprofit, um, that can't afford advertising. So the flip side to that is the fact that 100% of our growth has been word of mouth. Um, the Unite platform that we've built over the past year is the culmination and expression of pretty much everything that we've learned over four and, four and a half years of uh, running epic events and listening to the needs of our communities. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's actually really, really simple. It's a directory and community portal that uh, intends to bring together all the disparate factions of a tech ecosystem. Classes, news, jobs, events, companies, et cetera, et cetera. So much goes on in a city on a deluge of platforms like Meetup, Workopolis, LinkedIn, and it's all siloed, so it's not connected, so you don't really know what's going on at any given point. And if you're a newbie, figuring out where to start looking when you're interested in tech is, is really difficult. Unite brings together the industry in one place and makes it more connected and makes it stronger. We know what we are doing because uh, unlike others who have tried imposing similar things on communities, our approach is slightly different because we come from within. We actually are the community. Um, more participation in tech means more jobs, more collaboration, more innovation, more prosperity. Tech is the key to improving millions of lives really, really quickly. Organizations like internet.org get this and they are they're in the business of getting satellite internet to the two-thirds of the world's population that doesn't have access to the internet. So they're bringing technology to people. What Hackernest does is we bring people to technology, and we do this in a community-centric way that normalizes it so it's not voodoo or black magic, it's something that can actually help you feed your family. Um, we already have a big impact in large developed cities like Toronto. 
New York City. Um, but our greatest impact will actually be helping to pioneer the blueprint for what a supportive tech community looks like in developing cities. It took 50 years for North America to go from nerd, loser, don't sit with me, to, uh, oh, Mark Zuckerberg happens to be a rock star. If we can pioneer this evolved attitude in developing cities, well, we'll, we'll kickstart that and we'll fundamentally change the face of their economy forever. Um, Hacker and Unite will not end poverty, but will be the gateway to the community that can. We can all be better together. We go live in May. Thanks. What's, uh, what's your background? Malaysian. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you gotta be precise. <laughs> I, uh, I studied international relations and economics in, in university and I did developmental economics. Um, I used to be in private equity finance. I was uh, in advertising, corporate advertising. I helped build online insurance, premium financing software, and I used to be a VJ for a music channel and I used to do voiceovers for cartoons. Okay. And, and, I used to work with the UNDP on HIV, uh, HIV and AIDS in Southeast Asia. And I used to be a head and shoulders model. <laughs> you think I'm joking. The irony is palpable. You could have been one too. I could have been one. <laughs> How do you know I wasn't? Touche. Yes, Touche. Okay. Well played. So tell me more about how you plan to use this, this platform, really, that you're creating to make the people's lives better who are participating in it. When someone needs a job in technology in Toronto, they come to a Hacker Nest event. Then they leave because they get a job. Like, we, we want to do this, but online. Our tech, hundreds and hundreds of people have been hired out of our tech socials just because it reverses the, it, it actually reverses the hiring process. It's usually, let me send out a resume and then I'll take a look at these resumes um, as the employer and, and decide who I want to talk to. Well, at the tech social, because it's this completely unpretentious down to earth event, you get to talk to people first and then decide whether or not you want a resume from them. And this, you, you get to know people when they're not trying to pretend to be something that they think that you want them to be. When you interview somebody, it's like, oh yes, sir, I, I can absolutely do this. My greatest weaknesses are my dedication to work. But when you talk to them in this laid back, chill out setting of a tech social, it's like, oh, what irritates you about working? Oh my goodness, I cannot stand micromanagement. <laughs> Immediately you're like, well, I'm a micromanager. I shouldn't hire this person. Boom, solved. You, you get people being more honest when they're chill and laid back. Can, can you elaborate on the uniqueness of either the technology underneath it or the business model that you put in place? There Versus is no, other hackathons, et cetera, that are out there? So there is very little uniqueness to the technology. It's bootstrap and rails. Um, Ajax, because you know, no one's ever used Ajax. No, kidding, everyone uses Ajax. Um, the, it's social innovation rather than technological innovation that we're banking on because most of the world's problems are not solved by technology, it's solved by the application of said technology. This is not, nothing, this is not new. In fact, Yahoo used to do this 10 years ago. It was called a big list. Of, I'm not sure if any of you are old enough for this, but they used to have directories telling you every business in a community, and it was like super overwhelming. We're, we'll do it better, just, just saying. Does that kind of even remotely answer your question? Sure. Liar! It's not, it's not about the technology platform, yep. it's about the structure of the process that you're putting in. Yep, it's about the framework and the approach to community that we're taking and how this is easily adopted all over the planet. Um, we've, we've proven ourselves over and over and over again with no funding and no finances and no resources, so we gotta be doing something, right? And it's not public speaking. <laughs> Excellent. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.